I believe it is um, pretty much additional clothing to represent some devotion, both religiously and culturally. I believe it is a Muslim sign, um, but that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge on the matter for the most part. To me, it's a religious symbol. I'm not really aware of its significance, um, but I do see it around campus. I don't know what it actually means, but I have no bias, or I don't really judge people for wearing it or not. I think. Um Historically, uh, the head covering has been more common among urban Muslim women. And again, there's often a socioeconomic element to it because, of course, um, if you have to work outdoors in hard manual labor, it can sometimes get in the way, as can long flowing garments. Um, it's known that, for example, Bedouin women tended not to wear a head covering or a face veil. So what the Quran actually says about it is not very specific at all. It says something on the order of, in translation, um, tell the women among you to cover their bosoms and not to display their finery. So that could be interpreted a number of ways. Uh, I think the consensus is that the head covering was a custom that the early Muslims encountered among the Byzantines and Sasanians when they conquered the territories of those two empires. In particular, it was associated with uh, the economic and social elites. I recently wore the hijab, so I, for a long time I did not wear a hijab. So I do see the difference between uh, the, the reactions of people. Yes, I, have, I had a lot of friends who changed the way they, they dealt with me. Um, a lot of people ask me, and very educated people, you know, like I did not expect this from an educated person, but they would ask me, so why did you wear it? Was it, were you forced to wear it? Or like, so what made you, like they would sit me on the side, like, so what made you change? Or, and I tell them, I'm the same person. I did not change. The only thing that changed about me is I'm wearing this. I have the same, I have the same personality, I have the same perceptions in life, I do exactly the same things that I did before. The only thing is this, I'm just, I feel more comfortable covering. It, so it is, it is and, and I'm not talking about non-Muslims, I'm talking about Muslims too, who ask me these questions and, and they think like some kind of crisis that happened in my life or ever. No, it's not. It's just something that I feel, I felt that I wanted to do as a, from, from my religious basis and I felt more comfortable. It's part of my religion and I feel, you. I feel that it's a sign of humility and piety, and I feel stronger when I wear it, and I feel confident. I feel that I can't be judged by personal appearances. It's what, in, you know, it's who I am inside that counts, and I can be myself. And, and then I won't be looked at as an item, I'll be looked at as a person. I remember when I was in, thir in junior year of high school, um, someone commented on my jacket and they said they really liked it and then someone else made a snide comment saying it's not as cute as your scarf. My freshman year when I wore it, I was riding home from school one day. On one end of my street there's a family there that we kind of don't get along with and so I was riding my bike through that, through that way and one of the, the boys that lived there, he came over, ran across the street to where I was like riding my bike passing his house. He grabbed my bike held onto it so I couldn't move, and told me that my scarf was ugly, my teeth were yellow, and I was hairy and ugly, and I should rip it off. You know, women, Muslim women in the Middle East uh, giving up the headscarf uh, came in the early 20th century, and it involved a, an international women's conference in Rome in 1923. Uh, the Egyptian delegation was led by Huda Sharawi, who was a very well-known uh, Egyptian feminist and activist. Um, and uh, it's a very famous story. She got off the train in Alexandria after coming back from Rome. She took off her face veil and uh, threw it away. People, you know, just average community members, uh, didn't just approach them at will. They spoke to them from behind a curtain. Um, and that may have had implications for the face fail later. Interestingly, um, uh, after the Prophet Muhammad's death, uh, under the Abbasid Caliphate, the Caliph was always spoken to from behind a curtain, or the Caliph always spoke from behind a curtain. They'll probably never end entirely.
but I think already, just say in the past 10 years, we've seen a huge erosion of those stereotypes in the United States just because um, the country is becoming more and more diverse and uh, you see covered women in more and more professions in educational institutions. Um, you know, you might walk into your doctor's office and the receptionist might be a covered woman, the doctor might be a covered woman, you know, there might be covered women in the waiting room. And as it comes to seem more like an ordinary part of life, um, I think those stereotypes will be in danger, although they will always be with us the same way that unfortunately racism is always going to be there, no matter how many inroads are made against it.